I want to get your thoughts on what um, both Ukrainians and Russians heard from Ukrainian uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky. I think that he made a clear declaration of determination that Ukraine will see this war through and that, that they will seek a victory. How long? Right now, we're in day 312 since the invasion. So we're, we're, we're just shy of a year here. Um, how long do you anticipate this is going to continue? Can it end this year? Or are we looking at this could be years? Um, at the present time, it doesn't look like it can end this year. Yeah. I think it's likely there will be some ceasefires that both parties will try the negotiating table. And they'll see where their positions will land with the other party and they'll try and get international endorsement for their positions. But right now, the Ukrainians have the military advantage, and they will not be wanting to negotiate uh, a peace agreement in the near future. But at the same time, they're going to be suffering war fatigue this year. Come February 24th, at the one-year anniversary, it's going to be really tough for the Ukrainians, uh, having gone through the worst parts of the winter and, um, and looking to the future, and having suffered so many tens of thousands of losses mm -hmm. that both parties will be suffering from war fatigue. And that will force them to, uh, to, to go look at the options for the negotiating table. But right now, the positions are so far apart that uh, a hope for a peace is re really doubtful, but a hope for a ceasefire mm. that at least there would be some, some way that we can stop the bombing and the missiles and and the attacks that that might happen in 2023, at least on a trial basis. And with that comes, of course, and we've heard it regularly, of course, from Vladimir Zelensky, uh, the role of the international community, the support, adding in, again, more, uh, whether it's uh, tanks and artillery and whatnot, uh, financial funding. Talk to me a little bit, if you can, then, in terms of what the international role has been, perhaps needs to be, as we now head into a new year. Right. The West has been the arsenal of democracy. They provided Ukraine with the weapons they need to defend themselves, and the Ukrainians have been using those weapons very effectively. Hence, they've had major battlefield victory. They've been able to reverse um, tens of thousands of square kilometers of Russian occupation. And the, um, the Ukrainians have shown that they're, they're willing to fight and they're willing to learn. And of course, we have Canadian soldiers deployed in Britain in order to train Ukrainian forces. And uh, the, the United States has just put in a bill for $50 billion, mostly weapons. Mm -hmm. That is, um, is almost the entire defense budget of Russia. So the, the uh, Russians are really facing a daunting, um, you can say, enemy from their point of view. And the West does not yet seem to have war fatigue. Now, a new Congress is coming in um, this month, mm -hmm. and we don't know whether that will uh, weaken the resolve of the United States. But at the same time, um, there's a real determination to maintain the sanctions on Russia and to provide the weapons that Ukraine needs. So it's, it's not looking good for Russia. And we've also heard, um, you know, in terms of Europe's role as well, that support. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron said yesterday that Ukraine, France will be there to support Ukraine in its fullest. We've heard that as well um, from UK's prime minister. Uh, hearing that narrative as well and the financial, let's sort of also look at the financial impact this has had on Ukraine, of course, it is also having it on Russia. What do you then foresee at, at, at some point, what the damage continues to be, but then the reper or, or, or the them being able to recoup from all of this eventually? Oh, uh, you damage to Russia will be huge. Yeah. And in fact, it will damage the world economy. Um, the uh, cap that the West has placed on Russian oil at $60 US per barrel that's going to cause uh, Russia to have uh, a major loss of income. And uh, although they'll try and find many ways to get around that and sell oil um, to other countries uh, without the Western's approval, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they are going to um, suffer. And I think that it will cause Russia and a lot of Russians to rethink this, this war because it's really going to affect their pocketbook.
really quickly before I let you go then, do you think this could potentially continue to escalate into more of a financial war as well, a global financial war? It's definitely an economic war already um, with the Russians trying to get allies and selling oil to places like India. But at the same time, uh, the West has a huge advantage. They, uh, they're able to freeze uh, billions of dollars of the Russian uh, reserve, um, their foreign currency reserve, and they're able to, uh, to control a lot of the levers that are necessary for international financial transactions. So Russia is really going to be in a hard spot, and that put a huge pressure to make Russia come to the negotiating table, which we which hope that it will do in 2023. We'll be certainly watching things very closely. Walter, always appreciate you coming on to CTV News Channel to give us your analysis. Walter Dorn, Professor of Defence Studies at the Royal Military College of Canada. Thank you again. Thank you, Angie.